hello, hello. My name is James McCool. I'm the owner of PaterDFS.com. Y'all know me. This is uh, this is going to be a stream about some baseball stuff, but typically I am streaming about NFL or NBA or any of the projections that we have going on over the site. Uh, today's going to be MLB focused. We're uh, we're super excited for MLB to hopefully be coming back here pretty soon. Uh, who knows if it's actually going to happen? You know, with all the the lockout stuff and the the player salaries being, you know, apparently the the biggest problem that the owners have ever seen in their entire lives. They they just don't want to stop the manipulation time and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're hoping that MLB is coming back soon, and so I am hoping that people are going to be able to use this tool. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about baseball in general. We're going to talk a little bit about some DFS prep. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what I like to do leading up into the season. And we're also mostly going to be talking about this tool that I have uh, that is called the Adjusted Average Draft Position Calculator for baseball. Uh, the colloquial name of AADP. Um, it's a really, really cool tool. So we're going to be talking mostly about this. This is something that you will get uh, if you are a subscriber over at paydirtdfs.com. Um, it's a really, really cool tool. It's very, very valuable for season-long drafting um, for both best ball and regular formats, whatever format you want to be drafting into. This is a really valuable tool, uh, and we'll talk about why moving into the rest of the uh, stream. I'm I'm so rusty on streaming. We, we just moved, so now I live in a completely different part of the country. Um, it is a different time zone, so I'm thrown off on that. The lighting is not near as good as it was in my last office uh, because the windows are a little bit farther in back of me. The sun is not directly over to the south. Like there, There's this whole thing, but um, we have moved. We now reside in Tennessee, not Colorado, um, so that's a little bit of a change, but I'm hoping to be able to be streaming more and be able to be uploading more and doing more videos and stuff like that moving forward now that I'm all set up, now that we have internet, now that I have my office mostly set up. Obviously, you can see behind me there's not a lot going on. We don't have much of the art up, but um, it's uh, it's going to get put together and I'm excited to keep streaming some more. And yes, Dark Sheet Baseball. We're, we're excited. We love baseball here over at Pater. Uh, it's, it is the best DFS sport. It's not even close. I think the second best DFS board is probably, I mean, I guess you could say NFL. I think NFL is a really good DFS sport, but also Counter-Strike is a, is a super good DFS sport. If the contests were larger, I think Counter-Strike would, ca would catch on massively, but uh, I digress. Um, today we're going to be talking about the AADP tool. So this is going to be an instructional for people who want to use the tool, for subscribers over at Pater, it's also going to be letting people know how they use it and what it is if you don't know what it is. Um, or if you're not a subscriber over at Pater, or if you don't follow me on Twitter, then you know you haven't seen me posting replies about it to, uh, to various people. But basically what the AADP tool is, let me pull it up here, is a tool that you can utilize to uh, see if players are being drafted efficiently based on what their season long projections are. So what I do is I pull in an aggregate of season long projections from major projection sources and I pull them together. And then what I do is I have built a code and an algorithm that then compares them against similar projections uh, in the projection set and then finds what their ADP is. And then it will give them an adjusted ADP. So what they should actually be drafted at uh, based on similar comps and based on where other people are drafting specific players. So here we have an example of John Gray, uh, whereas John Gray, if you put the threshold at 10%, so, and there, there's little tool tips here, but the threshold is deviation from the projection that you're willing to accept in comparisons. So 10% means that on a 333 average, it would be accepting players between a 300 and 366 average as an acceptable match. So just know that. Uh, the proximity is how many of these things it needs to be matching with. So you can see that the comp grade here, this is mostly based on the proximity. So John Gray is a complete match to Joe Musgrove. He's a complete match to Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, he's a 90% match. So he's matching in all but one of these categories to guys like Max Fried and Ian Anderson and Chris Bassett. 
So what happens is Jung Gray, his ADP is 294, his adjusted ADP is 133. Obviously, he's a really, really good value. So what you do is you plug in a name here. So an interesting one that's coming up a lot this year so far is Max Fried. So let's plug him in. And then we'll hit this compare pitchers button. And that's going to run the comparison. So it's going to find everybody who compares with him within these thresholds and within this proximity. So Max Fried compares 100%. He's a very, very good match to Jack Flaherty, Joe Musgrove, Pablo Lopez, Chris Bassett, and Jordan Montgomery. So if you're looking at this, it's like, okay, even if you just said that you were only looking within proximity of 100%. Oh, not 100%, sorry. Not 900% either. So even if you were only looking within this match area, right? So if you're looking for people who are a perfect match, then his adjusted ADP would be 114 rather than 68 with a draft value of negative 4.65. So it's pretty negative draft value here. And the reason for that is because with the way that he is projected out, you can get very, very similar production to somebody like Pablo Lopez, right? 3.85 ERA to 3.72, 20 home runs allowed. Pablo Lopez has more strikeouts, similar walks, better whip. His quality starts is a little bit less than Max Fried, and the runs allowed is going to be less. So with an ADP of 132, there's not much of a reason to take Max Fried at 68. So he's being overdrafted here if you can get very similar numbers from somebody like Pablo Lopez. You can go down to Jordan Montgomery. Jordan Montgomery projects for 4.13 ERA, which is pretty close to a 3.85. 24 home runs, pretty close to 20. A couple more strikeouts, 159 versus 155. Basically the same walks, a little bit less. Same whip, very close to the same quality starts, and the same amount of runs allowed. And he, you can get him at pick 247 on average. So when you look at this, what it does is this uses k-means. This uses some, uh, some fun geometry. Uh, to figure out based on these comps and based on these ADPs where a player should actually be being drafted. Max Fried, even if you compare with just perfect matches with very, very close projection sets, uh, he projects as a negative value here. He should be being picked around pick 114, not pick 68. If you drop this down to the 80 range, which is what I prefer to use, then he should be going 123rd instead of 68. And that's because you end up then with guys like Steven Matz and John Gray and Tarek Skubal. And Tarek Skubal, I mean, a 4.08 ERA, real close 3.85. 23 home runs, 162 strikeouts, so more strikeouts, less walks, better whip, a couple less quality starts. This is where things start to get a little bit less. And then the runs allowed, he's supposed to allow less runs, and his ADP is 210. So again, with Max Fried, you are getting a negative value here by taking him at 68 on his ADP when you should be getting him around 123. So that's basically the idea behind this tool. You can do it for hitters as well, right? So let's say that we want to look at, um, off the top of my head, somebody like, I don't know, I don't want to pick like a well-known well person. Let's say Brandon Lowe. And then we'll compare hitters this time. So it's the same thing here. You can see that the names have changed or the, the stat categories have changed here, but the idea is, is still the same. His ADP is 74, his adjusted ADP is 102. The reason for that is because he matches well with people like Ian Happ and Jorge Soler. He matches pretty close to somebody like Hunter Renfro and he's right there with CJ Cron and Jared Walsh. So paying the ADP of 74 doesn't make too much sense with somebody like Brandon Lowe when you could be getting similar production later on in drafts. So that's the idea behind this kind of stuff. But let's go back to this Ian Anderson concept, right? So a lot of people are really high on him. And th this is gonna be a feature that I, that I added in this year that you'll find. Or not Ian Anderson, Max Fry. So people are really high on him this year, right? Like people are taking him to 68. They think that he's going to outproduce these numbers. So they think that he's going to be a little bit better than this. So what you can do if you believe that and you agree with that is that you can go over into the user boosts for pitcher. You can hit this drop down. You can say max fried. It'll come up and you can add him to that. And then you can say, okay, well, 
I think he's going to have more strikeouts. You know, instead of 155, I think he's going to have like 3% more strikeouts than that. And I don't think that he's going to allow that many runs. I think he'll have 5% less runs than what he's projected for. And I also think that he's going to have less walks. So I'm going to say 3% less walks. And then after you do this, after you go into the boosts, then you can rerun it and you can compare pitchers. And now you can see that his adjusted AP, ADP has gone down. It's closer to the 68. Now he's projected for 160 strikeouts instead of 152. He's projected for just 53 walks instead of 59. Oh, the runs actually went up. So that is uh, something that I need to fix here for sure. But basically, uh, when you go in, so we're going to do this correctly just so we can comp it correctly. So now the runs have gone down. Now he's only at 75.4 runs, right? So this, using these boosts, you're going to be able to boost players and boost pitchers and hitters to where you think that they are more likely to be. If you think that the ERA for Max Fried is too high and you want to drop it down some, say that you want to drop it down, actually I know why that happened. Say you want to drop it down 5%, right? Say you want to drop down all this stuff this way. So now he's projected for less walks, projected for a better ERA, he's projected for more strikeouts, projected for less runs, and still his ADP is, his adjusted ADP is 102. In fact, in order to get him to that 68, let's just boost everything 5%. And then let's see where he lands. That's not even that good. Like he, he is an overpay on a lot of levels. Now he's projecting close to guys like Charlie Morton and Joe Musgrove, but he's also there with Eduardo Rodriguez and Pablo Lopez. He's still projecting against J Jordan Montgomery. So that's a really cool feature that I added in this year is these user boosts. Uh, you're gonna be able to give boosts to each stat category and see where guys would end up if you're higher than them on the field. One of the last things that I'll show, and well, I mean, not one of the last things, but as we keep going through and showing off the different things you can do with this, you can also do these 1v1 comparisons over here. So I, here I just have Cody Bellinger versus Mookie Betts. It's going to show you the ADP and it's going to show you um, their stats for each category. But you can use this like, say, let, let's look at it for pitchers, right? So somebody that I just did the comparison for, I did Max Fried and Jordan Montgomery. So if we go over here and we put in Max Fried, and then we put in Jordan Montgomery here, then we can see who has the edge for each different comparison. So Max Fried obviously has the edge for ERA and home runs, but Drew Montgomery has better strikeout potential. He has better walks. Um, for the whip, they're tied. And then they're right there for runs. They might as well be tied for runs as well. So you can use these for 1v1 comparisons. Like if you're in the middle of a draft and you say, okay, well, I don't know if I want to take say Charlie Morton or Joe Musgrove. That that looks like a pretty good comparison that you can make because they're right next to each other. Right, so these guys are pretty much right next to each other. Um, they have very, very similar stats. There's really not much of an edge that you're getting on either one, but you are getting less runs and a better ERA from Charlie Morton. So maybe you just edge with that. But you can use these 1v1 stuff for uh, both hitters and pitchers. And then the other really cool thing that you can do here is you can do uh, full AADP runs. So this is going to build a draft board for you. You can either do just pitchers or just hitters or a full ADP run. So say that we wanted to look at an, ADP, an AADP run of the top 100 pitchers. So this is going to go off of ADP and it's going to find the top 100 pitchers in ADP and it's going to run them through all of the comparisons and then it's going to build out their adjusted ADPs based on the comps throughout the entire thing. So Shane Bieber is being taken uh, at the top overall. He, he's the number one um, or no, Garrett Cole is number one. It's, it's sorted by adjusted ADP now. Adjusted ADP like Shane Bieber the most out of anybody, of, of all the pitchers. So he has a really, really good value because he's being taken 22nd, but you want to be getting him at 13th. So you get a lot of value by taking him before that 22nd ADP. Um, Jacob deGrom is being taken 18th. He projects for 18th. That's where he should be. He has very, very uh, unique stat line being projected. 
You could argue that Jacob DeGrom, because of how unique his stat line is, should be pre- placed first. Uh, Corbin Burns being taken 15th, he should be taken 18th. So that's not that big of negative value. Garrett Cole, however, is being taken as the top overall pitcher, but his adjusted ADP is only 22. So he's a massive negative value here. We can look at somebody like Walker Bueller as well, who's a super negative value here. He's projected for 14th overall. That's his ADP. His adjusted ADP is 42nd. So he's a serious negative value. Jose Barrios, on the other hand, is being taken 71st. ADP likes him for 32nd. So that's a massive positive value. So what I usually like to do is I'll look at this for both hitters and pitchers. And and I could run the, the comp, the hitter ADP run as well, but I'm not going to. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is we're just going to run a full ADP run of the top 250 players for both hitters and pitchers. So this is how you're going to build out a traditional draft board using the ADP calculator. Um, and what it's going to do is it's just going to set things up for you to where you can just run this. You can look at it and say, okay, here's who I need to be taking here. Here's who's overvalued. Here's who's undervalued. You can sort by draft value. You can sort by ADP. You can sort by ADP to see who you should be fading. There's a lot of different things that you can do with a full AADP run and utilizing it as a draft board. Um, typically, it takes about 45 seconds to run, just depending on how fast your computer is. Oh, and I, I should mention that this is a downloadable file. So you're going to actually go and download this on your computer, and this is going to stay locally on your computer. Um, and I'll talk about how updates get sent in here in a second. But so yeah, it took about 46 seconds to run. And now we have a full draft board of 500 players to draft from. So what we're going to look at here is adjusted ADP has Shoyotani as number one overall. And that's because it's counting both his hitter and pitcher stats. So be aware of that. But after that, you can look through and you can see where people are overpaying, where people are underpaying. You know, Fernando Tatis Jr. looks like he's a serious overpay right now as the number one overall pick. If you keep going down the list, okay, Jonathan India is a pretty good value. Uh, Sean Manea is a pretty good value. <coughs> Excuse me. Trevor Story is a pretty negative value. And as we continue to go through these, so here's Shohei Otani as uh, the pitcher, by the way, just the pitcher. But as we continue to go through these, you may have questions and say, okay, well, why is it that Freddie Freeman projects as such a negative value, right? So then you're going to go back into the comp sheet, you're going to throw Freddie Freeman in, and then you're going to go compare hitters. And you're going to see, and you're going to say, okay, so he's being taken 16th, but his adjusted ADP is 54th. Why is that? And when you look at it and you run him, then you can get a really good idea of, oh, that's why. Because Corey Seager is being taken 59th overall, and he's basically the same player. Uh, you know, Paul Goldschmidt is being taken 52nd overall, and he's basically the same player, according to AADP. Um, these, these projections are all very close, and they're all within 10% of what Freddie Freeman is projected to, to have. And the idea here is that even though projections are good in an aggregated sense across the industry, you can find a lot of inefficiencies by people thinking that they are exact. Realistically, season-long projections are going to fluctuate between about a 10 to 15% scale. So being able to take advantage of that and saying, okay, Freddie Freeman projects well, but does he really project that much better than Paul Goldschmidt? Not really. So why would you be paying the 16th for ADP when you could just have Paul Goldschmidt at 52nd. And for Jesse Winker here, at 140th, I mean, a, two, a 280 versus 288 average, 372 versus 385 OBP, slug percentage, both just above 500, OPS, 20 points lower than Freddie Freeman. Total bases, this is the one where you're like, okay, that's quite a bit, but remember, this is still within 10%. Home runs, right there. Runs, a little bit less. RBIs, a little bit less. Stolen base is less. But for 140th, is there really much of a reason why Freddie Freeman should be going 16th if you can get within 10% project, um, production from Jesse Winker? Probably not. There's also a chance that Freddie Freeman has a 10% less outcome than what his projection says, and Jesse Winker has 10% greater outcome. And then you're looking at Jesse Winker, who's taken 140th, and Freddie Freeman, who's taken 16th and thinking they should have been swapped. 
So the idea of this is take advantage of the variance that people don't accept when they're looking at season-long projections. So, yeah, that's the whole tool. Um, it's really, really cool. It is very, very valuable for season-long drafting for both um, things like NFPC, for cutline leagues, and for also for best ball. Best ball especially because you don't get to draft again. You don't get to pick up off waiver wires. So it gives you a really, really good idea of where values are and who is overvalued. Um, this tool, like I said, is available for subscribers over at paydirtdfs.com. Um, if you're not a subscriber already over there, I don't know why you aren't. Uh, it's every single sport for $30 a month and all these extra cool tools that I build for the community, as well as an awesome Discord community. So um, make sure that you go get a subscription over there. And um, if you want to see more of this stuff, I'll be posting more of these explanations and more of these comparisons, stuff like that on Twitter. Um, but until then, we're going to be streaming more. We're going to be talking more. We're going to be uploading, uploading more videos. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to hit me up in the free Discord. I'll make sure to uh, link that on the YouTube video that I put out on this. Um, and get a subscription over to Pater, and I will be talking to you guys later. Bye.